there's a lot to talk about. Today we'll talk about pronated feet, fallen arches. How many people out there, hello Sandy Linder, how many people out there have fallen arches? Now look at this, look at this view right here. We can look at the neutral view and we can see that, look at the kneecaps, how they are aligned in the center. And look at the pronated view. Now we look at pronation. You're asking me, what is pronation? Well, guys, look here. Here is pronation. Look at this unsafe range and look at the safe range. Look how the foot goes inwards. Here's a little better view for you here. Well, I thought it was. Um, when your foot is pronated, all right, that means that the foot is going inwards. Okay, if we look at this view right here, we could see the foot kind of fall inwards. And the reason why it falls inwards is because that the arch has fallen down, the medial longitudinal arch has fallen down. And when that happens, it causes a whole biokinetic change that occurs within the lower extremity, works its way up to the knee, affects the pelvis, goes up to the spine, affects the, the neck area all the way up until you can experience forward head posture. So I wanna go ahead and show you some really important things uh, about this type of thing. So we look at pronation, uh, we look at plantar fasciitis, you can look underneath the bottom of the foot, we start experiencing burning, uh, pain, difficulty walking. When you first get up in the middle of the morning or in the middle of the day, you're going to have discomfort underneath that foot region called plantar fasciitis. Now, what do you do with this type of condition? How can you correct it? What are conditions that it can cause? Uh, this can cause a whole gambit of problems. Guys, ladies, um, this condition really can do wonders for you when I say set you back because you'll go to the physicians and doctors and they won't find out where this problem stemming from. Uh, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about this. Here's an orthotic, and this orthotic uh, is something that's there to help support the foot. Now, if you don't have good supports in your shoes, uh, you don't have an arch that's being built up and your foot's falling down, you're going to start experiencing problems, not only in the fascia, but actually in the heel, you can develop heel spurs. You can develop all kinds of problems. So with these kind of conditions, I want you to know that when you look at these problems, uh, let me go into something that you can kind of get a little bit. If you have this problem right here, you notice that you're wearing out your heels uh, more on the outside. If it's your gym shoes, your heels, and you're wearing your heels out more on the outside, you're going to uh, develop problems. This is pronation. Pronation means the feet go inwards, they fall inwards. And when you walk, your toes flare out. And when they flare out, this starts to wear down those heels much quicker. Now people are asking, well, what do you do with this kind of condition? The first thing I gotta tell you to do, uh, you, you really should have a good shoe uh, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, when you hear flat feet, by the way, uh, this flat foot in this, by the way, is a little different than pronation. Now, flat feet means that your arch has fallen. If you look at your feet, your, your feet has fallen. Hello, Jerry from uh, uh, Ottawa, Canada. Uh, your feet has fallen down. The arch has fallen down. And the problem is this is static. Static is the way it is when you're not using it. Uh, kinetic or biokinetic or movement is different when it comes down to pronation because pronation, you have to walk, you have to step. So there's a big difference here. Now, when you have this particular condition, th as we talked about the orthotic, it doesn't have to be an expensive orthotic. There are orthotics that can be put in shoes. There are good shoes and bad shoes. A lot of people will buy shoes because uh, it looks good on the outside. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean it's good on your foot for the inside. So when you develop this type of plantar fasciitis, you're going to develop problems. Now that fascia underneath connects underneath the heel. So if that fascia is pulling and tugging, 
you, you can start developing uh, hyper hyperexostosis, which is uh, osteoblastic activity, which means you start developing spurs in that particular area. So that could be very, very painful as well. Now you're saying, well, if I have spurs and I have heel problems, uh, what can I do to at least get me to feel a little bit better? Well, uh, these are what they call heel cups. And these heel cups take the load, take the shock off the heel. So if you're experiencing heel pain, you need to make sure that you have something under that heel that's going to take that load, take that shock. And these heel cups, you can, they're called Thule's. There's different ones. You can go on to Amazon. They have them all over. They have them in sports places. Uh, these are very, very, very helpful. Uh, actually, there are supports like these uh, in sandals that will support the arch as well. And this is very helpful when it comes down to uh, supporting that arch, when it comes down to that fallen arch, that pronated shoulder, that, that fallen foot. This is something that's serious. Now, I'm going to explain something. You're going to say, wow, I'm going to kind of blow your mind in a second. I'm going to show you how this problem affects knees, how it affects the lower back, how it affects the neck, how it affects forward head posture. You're going to be blown away because I'm going to show you the kinematics, the dynamics and how this stuff works because this is pretty intense stuff. So now you're asking me, what do I do if I have plantar fasciitis? I'm going to stick to this subject and then we'll go to the next subject. Well, there's a few things you can do and I hope this helps you. Um, number one, you can take a golf ball. And you can take that golf ball, you can rub it back and forth under that foot like this. And that will release a lot of the tight fascia because the fascia is just connective tissue. By rubbing it uh, back and forth using that, you know, a minute, couple minutes a day, different parts of the foot, that will ease up a lot of that pain and will hopefully help accelerate the healing. The next thing you can do, you can take a, a frozen water bottle, all right? And you can fill it up, put it in the freezer, and roll your foot over that frozen water bottle. And what that's going to do, that's going to reduce the swelling like an ice massage. That's going to actually increase mobility as you're reducing inflammation. A really great therapeutic thing that you can do as well. Now here's another one. It's called a toe curl. Now remember, anytime we, we flex the toes, we're working underneath the foot. If we extend the toes, we're working behind the foot. Now we're concerned underneath the foot. So you can take a towel and you could actually, this will help a lot of your flat footedness because you're going to help build the arch. This will rehabilitate the fascia, the tissue underneath the foot by taking a towel, folding it up a little bit like you see in that second view there. And as you're folding it up, you're squeezing that toe. You're taking the towel and you're squeezing it as you're folding the towel. So instead of using your hands and your fingers, you're using your, your toes and you're strengthening that arch. A great, great exercise. Something that I think can really help you guys a lot. Uh, so we look at that and actually there's another, uh, this is something I hope you can find uh, very beneficial. Um, let me give me one second here. I'm going to see if I could. Well, I'll have to do that after. But uh, here is something that is called taping for people who are really desperate. They have a lot of foot pain. Here is a great instructional thing. You can tape the fascia to keep it nice and tight to help support the fascia. You can refer back to this video uh, after about an hour or two. It's going to be reposted on my channel after I clean it up from the beginning. And you can go back to this and look at this because this can really help support that, that chronic fasciitis. Now, these problems can go on for a long, long time. So you want to make sure, guys, that you are taking proper care of this. Now, another great exercise you can do for that are foot towel stretches. So you can take the towel, wrap it around the top of the foot and pull it back. Wow, that's, that's a great exercise, guys. That will really stretch that fascia. You can do this several times a day, and this will help accelerate the healing process, uh, particularly uh, if you are having problems. Now, here is something you can use uh, basic uh, tape here. Uh, there's different kinds of tape. If you see here, this tape, uh, they have it in sports places on Amazon. Uh, just uh, a good uh, taping fastener thing. Here's another kind here. Uh, but basically, 
Uh, this is just something you can wrap over the calf underneath the back of the Achilles tendon that's up uh, and un underneath because understand that when you have plantar fasciitis, one of the best things you can do for these tight foot problems is you need to stretch the calf. Now look, the calf area comes down to the Achilles tendon behind the uh, ankle and wraps around, but that fascia comes all the way around the heel underneath the foot. Now, if you look at this, one of my favorite exercises, let's see if I can find it for you guys. Uh, give me one second. Well, I got so much here. Um, these stretches right here, I go back and get rid of the other thing here. One second, I found it. Let's get rid of that. Now, this is something, guys, you don't want to lose. Two things you can do here, all right? You can just go on a stairs, go on something higher, and let those heels come down, stretch the calves. Really great. Look, that, that's to the right side, where you can just let your foot edge off both stairs, keep the, the leg straight. In the middle, you can take the back foot and put the heel down, and then stretch forward and you'll stretch that calf. That's excellent for plantar fasciitis. You're saying, why the calf? Because it's all connected. Now, to the left, that's one of my favorites. Put your foot, the top of your toes, on, on the wall and just push it down. That will really, really stretch. Really stretch. You could do it on both sides, but that's an excellent stretch for you guys. And hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Okay, now we talked... Uh, about these particular problems. Now, what about the knees? Well, let's go back here, guys. Let me see if I can remove this. And let's go to, uh, we talked about the heel cup. We talked about the sandal support. Uh, what about this picture right here? When you are pronated, look what happens. The inside of your knee bends inwards. It internally rotates. Knee problems, it changes the angle the Q angle of the knee. What happens is the knee moves inward. The hip rotates internally. The pelvic goes forward. So think about this. All right, you got a pelvic. You got the, I'm sorry, you got the, 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 the foot pronating in. When that happens, the, the knee above internally rotates, moves the knee inwards, internally rotates the hip above like this, and brings the pelvic forward. So anterior pelvic tilt from pronation of the feet. Now that's very powerful. I don't know if you really understand that. Now people, if you look on my, on my channel under anterior pelvic tilt, millions of people, I mean thousands and thousands of people are hitting that. Everyone wants to know about anterior pelvic tilt, but I'm telling you, you can fix anterior pelvic tilt and never fix it if you're pronated in the feet. It gets a little more heavier than that. Okay, let's go ahead and show you the compensation. Look at this picture here. Now this is crazy. You're saying, wow, this is colorful. Don't forget about the colors. This is crazy. Look, internal rotation of the left foot, internal rotation of the left knee, internal rotation of the left hip. The pelvic on the left side, it goes lower. Okay, causing the left pelvic to go lower, the right pelvic to come higher. And look what happens to the shoulders. The opposite happens to the shoulders. So in other words, the low, the low left side causes the, the high left shoulder. The high right side of the pelvic causes the low left shoulder. Remember something, guys. When things change below, everything else compensates above. Now you're saying anterior pelvic tilt. Well, anterior pelvic tilt is a serious condition because anterior pelvic tilt, okay, not only causes uh, the lumbar, let's show you here. Okay, anterior pelvic tilt goes forward like this, but we get hyperlordosis. The spine in the lower back becomes more disc herniations, disc degeneration, uh, facet tropism, sacroiliac problems, right in here. 
Sacral iliac. We all heard of this. Piriformis syndrome under here affecting that sciatic nerve. Okay? These are some serious conditions. Now watch what happens. If this pelvic, okay, goes forward, the lumbar spine goes more increased, we call it hyperlordosis. That means the thoracic spine has to compensate more hunching over, and then you start developing forward head posture. So in other words, forward head posture can affect from anterior pelvic tilt as well as pronation of the feet because it's a kinetic chain. When one thing affects below, other things have to compensate. Let's go ahead and see if I can show you this because you can see if you wear a good support under your foot, look how the corrected posture starts to change. That when you have poor foot alignment, sore feet, sore knees, sore hips, sore back, it affects your neck. You're degenerating. It's causing imbalances. This is a real serious condition. No one presents it this way because we just don't want to chase the symptoms. We want to get to the root, the causation, because once you get degeneration, that's it. Degeneration doesn't regenerate again. Uh, so this view right here shows us the structure, as we talked about, when the pelvic changes, when it goes inferior, how the pelvic... Uh, so in other words, you can have a high shoulder, you go to a chiropractor, an orthopedist, a doctor, he starts trying to fix your high shoulder without addressing, without addressing this particular problem right here. Now think about it. You're trying to fix something here that's secondary or tertiary. But if it's not primary, if it's not coming from below, this, the, the problem up in that shoulder is never going to go away. So I want to bring out, let me just see if there's anything else I left out. We talked about the imbalance here, the kinetic chain, how when one thing changes below, other things start to compensate. We talked about the knee hip. When internal rotation occurs, how internal rotation of the knee and the hip starts to be affected, causing forward uh, head posture, uh, forward uh, rotated uh, pelvic, forward pelvic. Uh, we went over some exercise, some stretches for you. We talked about orthotics. We didn't touch on the domino effect. The domino effect of forward head posture, we talk about this, things change. You know, when you're, when you're sway back or you're hyperlordotic, okay, because sway back and hyperlordosis are, are different, you know, but for our sake, let's talk about hyperlordosis. When you have this increased curve, this is changing up top because as this changes, this changes. Uh, so it's a domino effect that the areas below can affect forward head posture. And forward head posture can be affected by many things, just not looking over a terminal or just not texting. A lot of my videos are on texting. That is a big thing, and that's probably a more common thing. But I want you to understand that if you're having problems here and it's not getting better, you need to look below. You need to look at the pedal foundation, that everything that happens above has to be following what goes on below. So... We look at the domino effect, how it's all uh, works hand in hand. Uh, good posture is so important versus poor posture, something I spend probably more than anyone here on the internet on. But um, it's so important to really focus on good posture because that is what your life is going to love you for in the end because that's going to slow down degeneration, keep your body centered. It's just going to cause a lot less problems because when we're in balance, we get so many problems of headaches, disc degeneration, herniated disc, bulging disc, osteoarthritis, spinal degeneration. Now, people, we're going to talk about maybe another time just on knees. And I'm going to show you what happens in the knees from pronated uh, posture, pronated feet. Uh, the knees start to wear and tear from the inside. Um, Boy, I wish I would have pulled some of those pictures up, but I'm not going to do it now because I kept you guys too long before. So uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, we talked about a whole lot of things today. I really hope that this really clicks. It really uh, hits home with you because uh, posture is so, so, so important. I, I cannot stress it. Uh, I really cannot stress it to, to anyone because 
to everyone because this is so important. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and just uh, show something very simple. Okay, I need to put this up just for a second, just for you guys so I can put this up. I just want everyone to know out there that everything that we talk about in this particular video uh, is not a doctor-patient relationship, but in the sense that I'm here to help you and give you a better understanding. I would recommend if you have serious problems or continued problems, I'd be more than happy to give you advice, but although I cannot recommend or diagnose, it's always a good idea to see your doctor. Uh, I just wanted to stress that to everyone. Um, I also want to go ahead and uh, stress one thing uh, that I ask you guys out there, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, I ask you to share these videos on your social media. There's a lot of great videos on there. You can check out my anterior uh, pelvic tilt uh, video on my channel. I have so many other great videos I recently posted. We're starting to do a lot more live videos. I get a lot of great feedback, and I think a lot of you guys like to be here live. A little different. I know you can look back uh, on, my, on, my, on my channel and see a lot of these pre-live uh, streams, but the live streams are really powerful because it's kind of like the, being together. You know, I, I can kind of feel your energy. And I, I look at your, your live chat, and I'm not spending so much time going through your live chat right now because I'm trying to move, a, move on with the education. But um, the other thing, uh, through Facebook, uh, Motivational Doc is the best way to really get a hold of me. I have a, a Motivational Doc at Yahoo.com. Uh, but Motivational Doc at Facebook is easy for me on my, on my fan page because I can just go through my messages, click, 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 and I don't have to go through all my other emails. I get about 400 emails a day on my regular uh, Yahoo, uh, but uh, you know I, I try to do my best to answer as much as I can. I get, I'm overwhelmed in emails, but I try to do my best. Uh, the other thing I just want to mention, uh, let's see here. Um, I appreciate... Uh, my subscribers, people tuning in, all your comments, uh, all your great feedback. Um, I try to continue to to upload as much as I can with you guys. I, I sometimes try to do it daily, but I know we're touching lives. Uh, if you go right now and you just just push it, just plug in neck pain on YouTube here, uh, all my videos, YouTube, I want to thank you again for, for recognizing me that uh, all my videos are coming up on top. They're just like boom, 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 boom worldwide. So Obviously, it's touching lives. People are clicking and they're edu becoming educated. We're hitting people all around the world out here, guys. And uh, listen, this is not about me. I'm not asking you for anything. i just here just putting the love out to you and hopefully we can help a lot of lives. Uh, anything else? Uh, if you just want to go ahead and throw me a couple quick questions, um, I will go ahead and answer them real quick. Um, if you guys, I understand I got a lot of ch live chat coming through right now. Um, if you want to just throw me a, a quick rib pain, Lewis rib pain, I don't know what you're doing. Best thing for rib pain, chronic rib pain, is moist heat, moist heating pad. I love about 20, 30 minutes, a couple times a day. Don't sleep with it. Uh, that's something important. Uh, but again, you know, we look we look back at our posture. So many of us are just hunched over, just looking down. Just We really need to take this serious because all this degeneration that goes on is, is just beating us up, man. I'm telling you, uh, you know, I see it all. I prevented hundreds and hundreds of operations. We've done a lot of work uh, in South Florida here with people around the country. Uh, people are asking me about, you know, when can they see me? I'm not in the office. I do a lot of travel. I do a lot of work with kids, but I spend a lot of time here and some local TV stations and uh, networks hopefully will pick me up later that we can continue to educate our community out there. Fibromyalgia. Uh, fibromyalgia, Ingrid, I'm not a believer in that. I'm a believer in... Uh, in myofascial changes. I'm a believer in muscular imbalance. I'm a believer in postural imbalance. And if you have postural imbalance, weakness, or imbalance of those muscles, it will lead to symptoms of like fibromyalgia. Osteoarthritis in the hips and knees. Uh, Jerry, I would recommend number one, lose weight. Okay. Number one, degeneration in knees is excessive weight. Next thing, Jerry, I would recommend a good pair of orthotics or a good pair of shoes to keep your feet balanced because pronation of the feet that we just talked about will lead to degeneration of that of those knees. Uh, Olivia, pain around the stomach, back after sleeping, sleep on your back or side. 
If you're on your back, pillow underneath the knees. If you're on your side, pillow between the knees. Pillow wise on your back, flat pillow on your side must be a pillow to keep your head in line with your spine. Your head cannot be propped down or propped up, or otherwise it's gonna throw your alignment off. Okay, uh, Instagram, yeah, I am motivational doc on Instagram too, by the way. Um, I'm, I just post a little thing here and there, but uh, feel free to, to, to friend me over there on Instagram, motivational doc. Um, Let's see here. This last but not least, uh, Aggie, pain and tightness in the right side of your chest towards the neck and shoulder and back also affects your jaw. Well, forward head posture will affect TMJ. All right, most important, guys, the best thing that everyone can do, number one, are your chin tucks, okay? Your chin tucks, put your hand on your chin and let it pretend it just slides backwards, just like this. Don't bring your head forward or backwards. Bring it back. You can take a towel or resistant band and push back against there. You can lay face down on the bed with your head down and you can just lift back doing chin tilts. There are different ways you can do it. Make sure you get your, your arms inside a door, tress, uh, uh, stretch those chest muscles, those pec muscles, and do rhomboids. Rhomboid muscles, just pinching the shoulder blades back together and down and relax. Pinching them back together and down. You can take an elastic band like this or a towel and you can pull back where you push your shoulder blades together. I have a lot of great videos on posture. You should check those out. Uh, last one, let's just take the last one, Melissa. Uh, you have flat feet, anterior pelvic tilt. You wear orthotics. You're more prone to knee degeneration. Yes, you are. What's best for you to do? Stay with the orthotics. Keep the weight down. Um, pelvic tilt doesn't really drive me crazy. Don't let it drive you crazy. If it's real bad is one thing. Most people do not have excessively bad pelvic tilt. Uh, my best advice for you to do is when you, when you have an excess pelvic tilt, obviously what's happening? Now, what I want you to do, go to my channel on anterior pelvic tilt. It's probably one of the most comprehensive videos you'll watch, about 21 minutes, and it will really tell you lots of things you can do that will help you. But regarding the knees, um, keep... A good keep those orthotics in keep the weight down and again you'll do fine okay guys um you can look through this video it's going to be reposted probably about an hour hour and a half um if not maybe a little later sometime tonight i have to go ahead and edit it try to cut out the beginning to make sure that we don't bore people i thank you guys so much for for tuning in with me and again uh, we'll continue to feed you with good information and I hope this really helped you because I got a lot of great information here on plantar fasciitis, uh, some things you can do at home, how to help it, some information, basically how it, how it affects your knee. And one thing I want to throw out at you guys is that if you're having chronic knee problems, try looking at the feet. Now, as I said before, this picture right here, if you just tuned in with me with one last picture, I want to, show, I want to throw out at you, this picture right here. If you are wearing out the outside of your heels, your, your, your gym shoes, your regular shoes, you are pronated. This is number one tip, okay? That's a good sign to know that you are pronated. And if you're having chronic pains in your hip, your knee, your low back, and you're saying, I didn't do anything, well, you really didn't do anything. You've been doing the same thing for a long period of time. Anyways, guys, uh, listen, it's been a pleasure. God bless. Enjoy the rest of the days. And, and again, all my friends and, and subscribers uh, tuning in from, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia to Europe to, to Africa, out in China, uh, out in the Philippines. You know, I, I can't thank you enough for, for, for the respect and the love. And again, most important, I ask you to take those videos on my channel and share them. Put them out. You don't have to ask me. Just share them. Uh, it's really helping a lot of people. And that's what it's all about. Remember, we got to look at the big man above. If we're doing something good in our life, that's the best thing that we can do for ourselves. God bless you guys, and we'll, we'll catch up with you real soon.